Hello everyone, back to you in today's first video, we're doing the ECMWF 30 day look at for today's uh, first video, we're at the Hungarian Met Office uh, for this update, we're going to have a look at the temperature and precipitation anomalies for the next uh, four weeks, and uh, we're going to see what they're showing uh, not just for UK, but for Europe as well. So I'll get back with you very shortly. Just say that coming up later on this afternoon, we'll have a uh, look at weather for the next week, 10 days. Could be over a cold snap uh, next week. And we'll have more about that in today's second uh, video update. But uh, starting us off is our 30-day uh, look at with the ECMWF 30-day model. Um, so we can't show you mean cellular pressure or 500 millibar height anomalies with this uh, update. We can only show you temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies. But you can get a rough idea, really, of uh, what model is going to be uh, forecasting in terms of the broad pattern from these temperature and precipitation anomalies. Right, so let's go on with it. We start off with uh, week one for our forecast period. It's week 13 for uh, 2019, of course. Uh, week one for our forecast period. It's taking us from the 25th through to the 31st of March. So you see that Northern Europe is being forecast to have a warmer than average uh, week in the week ahead. We find that much of Scandinavia down to northern parts of the Germany and over North Sea into northern parts of the UK, particularly Scotland, being forecast to have above average temperature anomalies in the week ahead. That leaves many other parts of Europe actually looking quite cool. So we've got average temperatures, rest of England, Wales and Ireland. Uh, we go further south in towards France and it's a little bit cooler than average there. Most of uh, the low countries and Germany also looking rather cooler than average away from the far north of Germany and Poland anyway. Uh, I mean, it gets even cooler as you go down in towards southern Europe. So uh, you get down into Mediterranean and away from Spain and Portugal, where it's uh, milder than average there. Uh, but from the costas through to the central base of the Mediterranean, on to Corsica, Sardinia, Malta, into uh, Italy, and then over the Adriatic, in towards Greece, Turkey, and the Balkans. All those areas are being forecast to be colder than average in uh, the week ahead. These eastern parts of Europe average to, uh, close to average to uh, a little bit cooler than average as well. So if warmth is really in the far north of Europe and down in the far southwest, otherwise it is actually quite a chilly scene across Europe uh, this week. Precipitation anomalies are looking like this. So the very far north is uh, coming out a little bit wetter than average, particularly parts of uh, Norway. Otherwise, quite a dry scene, most of Much drier than average across the west of Europe, Ireland, UK, France, Spain, Portugal, much drier than average there. Uh, large parts of the Mediterranean also looking rather dry. So it's rather unusual week, this. It's uh, drier than average through much of the mayor, but also cooler than average, which for this time of year would be quite an unusual uh, combination, I would have thought. Uh, then the central and eastern parts of Europe, uh, it's just kind of like a little bit drier. Uh, than average, but it does look like overall most parts of Europe are actually dominated by high pressure uh, in the week ahead. We go through to uh, week uh, two, which of course is week 14 for our, our forecast period. Quite big changes. We find many western parts of Europe are going colder than average. This could be our cold snap, but we're seeing within the shorter range model output for the first week of uh, April. More on that in today's second video update. But for Ireland, uh, UK, much of uh, France, some parts of uh, western Germany, also Belgium, Holland... Um, those sort of areas, when going down to uh, Spain and Portugal, will be fine. Generally, it's a bit on the colder than average side. And also, much of Mediterranean looking uh, below average. and quite cool all the way from Spain and Portugal over towards Italy. The warmth is in the north and northeast of Europe, so uh, much of Scandinavia uh, and also uh, much of northeast of Europe over towards western parts of Russia, generally, <coughs> excuse me, generally, it's a little bit milder than average through those areas. These eastern parts of Europe from Ukraine down towards the Black Sea, generally close to average. And the southeastern part of Europe for Greece and Turkey, uh, overall quite uh, below average. So a fairly cool week really away from the north and northeast in uh, week two. 
this our precipitation is uh, looking so not anywhere near as dry in week two as it is in week one we still see that these eastern parts of europe are uh, a little bit drier than average there the mediterranean looking much wetter than average particularly from the central basin of the med over towards italy uh, above average precipitation there spain and portugal looking a little bit on the driving average side. I mean, going further north, we've got uh, much of France, uh, low countries, Germany uh, coming out close to average. UK and Ireland close to average precipitation for us as well. You see, it does look a little bit wetter in the North Sea and around these northern and western coasts. This does imply a northerly, I think, that's going on here. It's implying that the ECO is definitely seeing a chance of a northerly through the first week of uh first week of april going up towards scandinavia it's a bit uh, wetter than average up there um and we move through to week uh three which of course is week 15 for uh, 2019 and uh, this is taking us from the 8th through to the 14th of april uh so we're losing most cold of an average temperature anomalies uh temperature anomalies are reverting back to average for the western parts of europe so ireland UK, France, down to Spain and Portugal. It's nowhere near as cold in week three as it is in week two. Close to average with precipitation. Well, a little bit cold and average still for southern parts of France, Spain and Portugal. Many central and northern parts of Europe are coming out uh, with above average precipitation through this, uh, through this sort of second week up to middle part of April. And then down through the Mediterranean, still nothing particularly exciting happening with the temperatures there. Overall close to or a little bit below average, really from the west of the Med over into the eastern and southeastern corner of the Mediterranean. Things becoming drier as well through week three. So we see fairly weakish signal, but we do see that um, week three, the uh, 8th to the 14th of April, is generally looking uh, on the drier than average side, or slightly drier than average side, for many uh, central and northern parts of Europe. Any above, uh, above average precipitation is really through the Mediterranean. So it looks quite unsettled and quite cool through the Med, actually, through this second week of April, uh, particularly above average around the islands uh, of uh, the central basin of the Med and also for some parts of Italy. So it looks quite unsettled through the Mediterranean, but generally most parts of Europe uh, through this week, the 8th to the 14th of April, uh, a little bit um, drier than average. So obviously some sort of ridge of high pressure is starting to return, I think, through this uh, second week of April. And then finally, we go through to uh, week four, which is the 15th through to the 21st of April, taking us up towards Easter, of, co of course. Uh, and we find that the temperature anomaly is weakening quite a lot now. So it still looks as though it's a little bit above average with the temperature with the temperature anomalies across northern parts of Europe, particularly focused around Scandinavia and the Baltic. Still looks a bit colder than average in this southeastern corner from southern Italy down towards Greece and Turkey. Otherwise, it's just very uh, sort of weak signal, close to average, or probably more likely the model is just kind of losing uh, the signal as it often does in uh, week four. Precipitation wise, again, very weak signals, but overall it does look as though away from the med, where it's possibly a little bit more unsettled, most places are being forecast to be slightly drier than average. So after that cold first week to April, it looks as though, with normally winds in Western Europe, it looks as though high pressure comes back. We probably start to lift the temperature back close to average or maybe get warmer for the north of Europe, but it also turns drier as well. Uh, and April could actually be a month that turns out to be fairly pleasant and uh, spring-like. That's the way I'd sort of read between the lines of this, which is something that you often have to do uh, with long-range models. They don't always give you the full sort of um, uh, data and give you all of the outputs. So sometimes you have to read between the lines. I think what we're seeing here is signs of a relatively mild and high pressure dominated final end to March. Then a cold snap in the west and the north of Europe in the opening days of April. But quite quickly, we go back to high pressure, returns us to dry conditions, and temperatures start to lift up. More than anything, probably due to the time of the year we're getting in towards the middle of the spring. So uh, it takes a lot to keep it cold uh, in April. 
so I would suggest um, April could actually be uh, turning out to be quite a pleasant month if this comes off. Big if, of course, all these long range models are highly experimental. They're change, prone to chopping and changing. So don't necessarily take it all that seriously. That's what it's showing this week. Right, so that's it for your E7F 30 day look. We'll be back later on this afternoon with a detailed look at the weather for the next week to 10 days, including the chance of a cold snap from the north next week. Come back for that this afternoon. That's all now, and thanks for watching.